Uh, hello everyone in this video I want to continue talking about uh, replication we have mentioned that uh, during replication the two strands of DNA separate uh, the bases on each side of the molecule are used as a pattern for a new strand uh, so uh, as bases on the original molecule are exposed complementary nucleotide are added Hello. when replication is completed there are two identical DNA molecules you have to study these uh, uh, steps these are very important to know them about the DNA replication uh, but now I want to show you um, a video about DNA replication I want you to listen to this uh, video carefully uh, just hold on Uh, actually, they were uh, they are going to mention a lot of uh, enzymes. Uh, this, يعني, you have to know them later, but I want you and don't memorize them for grade eight, okay? DNA. We talk about it so much. It's the ultimate director for cells, and it codes for your traits. With a molecule that has a function like that, it makes sense that when you make another cell, like in cell division you would also need to get more DNA into the new daughter cell. And that introduces our topic of DNA replication, which means making more DNA. First, let's talk about where and when. First, where. Well, if it's in a eukaryotic cell, it occurs in the nucleus. However, remember, not all cells have a nucleus, such as prokaryotic cells. They don't have a nucleus. Still, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells do DNA replication. But there's some differences between the two that this clip doesn't go into. Next. Uh, very important to know, replication happens in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, okay? This note's very important. When? When does this happen? Well, a cell is going to need to do this before it divides so that the new daughter cell can also get a copy of DNA. To get specific, in a eukaryotic cell, that's going to be before mitosis or meiosis in a time known as interphase. So it's very important to know DNA it's in the interface before the cell division. Okay, continue. And would actually make a great video game. Still waiting for that to be invented. I'm going to introduce the key players in DNA replication so that you can get some background information. And remember, these are just some major key players. There's a lot to this process. Many of the key players are enzymes. In biology, when you see something end in ASE, you might want to check as it's very possible that it's an enzyme. Uh, okay, can... listen now. Look at this, these enzymes. These are working as with the what? With DNA replication. Uh, we have DNA polymerase, a helicase, primase, lycase. Each one of these enzymes has a function in the DNA replication. An enzyme. Enzymes have the ability to speed up reactions and build up or break down the items that they act upon. So here we go with the As you players. know, the enzymes, they are made up of proteins, enzyme. sorry. If you recall that DNA has... The enzymes, they are made up of proteins, okay? And these enzymes, they speed up the chemical reaction. Let's look at this one. Helicase, the unzipping enzyme. If you recall that DNA has... So helicase, that help to what? To open the two strands. Okay, enzyping enzyme. Look at this one, how it works. Helicase. Two strands. You can think of helicase unzipping the two strands of DNA. Helicase doesn't have a hard time doing that. When unzipping, it breaks through the hydrogen bonds that hold the DNA bases together. DNA polymerase, the builder. This enzyme replicates DNA molecules to actually build a new strand of DNA. Primase, the initial. Let's go back. What no, is wait. great is DNA. I'll go back to the uh, here. Uh, let's start talking. We said the uh, helicase start to open the two strands, break down the hydrogen bonds. Uh, then uh, this is unzipping enzyme, and uh, the this enzyme here after helicase, which unzipping is what enzyme. the if you recall that DNA has two strands, you can think of helicase unzipping the two strands of DNA. Helicase doesn't have a hard time doing that. When unzipping, it breaks through the hydrogen bonds that hold the DNA bases together. DNA polymerase, okay. the builder. 
the DNA polymerase here we said if you remember that it's adding the um, the nitrogen bases the correct nitrogen bases which enzyme is doing this which is what DNA polymerase that's why it's called the of uh, the builder this enzyme replicates DNA molecules to actually build a new strand of DNA primase the initializer okay with as great as DNA but and here actually uh, how to start this one primase uh, it helps where to start this DNA replication listen look at, at this Oops. without something called a primer primase makes the primer so that DNA polymerase can figure out where to go to start to work you know what's kind of interesting about the primer it makes the primer is actually made of RNA, ligase, the gluer. It helps glue DNA fragments together. More about why you would need that later on. Now, don't feel overwhelmed. We'll go through the basics of this sequence in order. But remember, like all of our videos, we tend to give the big picture. There are always more details and exceptions to every biological process that we can't include in such a short video. DNA replication starts at a certain part called the origin. Usually this part is identified by certain DNA sequences. At the origin, helicase, the unzipping enzyme, comes in and unwinds the DNA. Here's the thing though, you don't want these strands to come back together. So SSB proteins, which stands for single stranded binding proteins, bind to the DNA strands to keep them separated. And topoisomerase, I always have to slow down when I say that enzyme's name, keeps the DNA from supercoiling. Supercoiling might sound super, and it can be when you're trying to compact the DNA, but it's something that needs to be controlled during DNA replication. Supercoiling can involve an overwinding of the DNA, and you need the DNA strands to be separated for the next steps. Primase comes in and makes RNA primers on both strands. This is really important because otherwise DNA polymerase won't know where to start. In comes DNA polymerase. Okay, before we go on, remember how we said DNA has two strands? They're not identical, they complement each other. In our video that covers DNA structure, we talk about how the bases pair together with hydrogen bonds. The base adenine goes with the base thymine, and the base guanine goes with the base cytosine. These strands are also anti-parallel, so they don't go in the same direction. What do we mean by direction? Well, with DNA, we don't say north or south. We say DNA either goes five prime to three prime, Okay, I want you to stop here. <clears throat> uh, here, how they are in, it's not in the same direction. You know, they are double strands, and the backbone of the strand, it's made up of the sugar, and it, it has carbon. I want you to listen carefully to this. It's not any, yani, just to get familiar when you see the five prime and three prime, three prime and the five prime. Listen to this, how these strands, these have these numbers, not south and uh, uh, north. Listen again. Parallel, so they don't go in the same direction. <coughs> what do we mean by direction? Well, with DNA, we don't say north or south. We say DNA either goes five prime to three prime, or three prime to five prime. What in the world does that mean? Well, the sugar of DNA is part of the backbone of DNA. It has carbons. The carbons on the sugar are numbered right after the oxygen in a clockwise direction. One prime, two prime, three prime. 4 prime and 5 prime. The 5 prime carbon is actually outside of this ring structure. Now you do the same thing for the other side, but keep in mind DNA strands are anti-parallel to each other. So let's count these, again clockwise after the oxygen. 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime, 5 prime. And the 5 prime is out of this ring. This strand on the left runs 5 prime to 3 prime. And the strand here on the right runs 3 prime to 5 prime. We'll uh, okay, focus on this again here. I want you to go here. So this five prime represent number of carbon at this side here. So it goes to this direction as you see. This it goes to the di di this direction from five prime to the three prime, and this one here depending on the three prime here, which is here. Uh, so it goes from three prime to the five prime. Okay. 5 prime to 3 prime. And the strand here on the right runs 3 prime to 5 prime. 
We'll explain why all that matters in a moment. So let's take that knowledge there and look at DNA replication here. In this image, I labeled the top original strand 3' prime to 5'. Prime. I labeled this bottom original strand 5' prime to 3'. Prime. That's the original DNA that is going to be replicated. The old, the original. It's unwinding here thanks to helicase. In this example, it will keep unwinding in this direction. Primase places primers. DNA polymerase is building the new strands. Now, the thing about DNA polymerase is, when it's building a new strand, it can only build the new strand in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, meaning it adds new bases to the 3' prime end on the new strand. See how it's being built in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction? This one is called the leading strand. But take a look down here. So DNA polymerase, once again, is building a new strand in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. But there is a bit of a problem here. See, as DNA unwinds, because DNA polymerase can only build the new strand in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, it has to keep racing up here next to where this unwinding is happening. You can see why then this new strand is known as the lagging strand. Mm -hmm. On this lagging strand, primers have to keep being placed in order for DNA polymerase to build. These fragments that result are known as Okazaki fragments. Primers have to get replaced with DNA bases since the primers were made of RNA. Ligase, the gluing enzyme, as I like to nickname it, has to take care of the gaps between Okazaki fragments, sealing them together. At the end of replicating, you have two identical double helix DNA molecules from your one original double helix DNA molecule. We call it semi-conservative because the two copies each contain one old original strand and one newly made one. One last thing. Surely you've had to proofread your work before to catch errors? In this process, you don't want DNA polymerase to make errors. If it matches the wrong DNA basis, then you could have an incorrectly coded gene, which could ultimately end up in an incorrect protein, or no protein. DNA polymerase is awesome. It has proofreading ability, meaning it rarely makes a mistake, which is a good thing. So remember how we said there is far more detail to this process to explore? The detailed understanding of DNA replication has led to some life-saving medical treatments that can stop DNA replication in harmful cells, including pathogenic bacteria or human cancer cells. We encourage you to explore beyond the basics. Check out the further reading suggestions in the video details to explore. Okay, so here, because this is process, it's very, uh, it's, uh, it's speed, you know, very fast process. Okay, so here we said they can check if there is any error or not, but still, even of this checking, still sometimes uh, some mutation can happen. We will talk about a mutation and uh, how this wrong will happen and how it will affect. Uh, but uh, we can talk about this in the next uh, video. If you have any question uh, about DNA replication, you can send me your questions. Thank you for listening.